You're watching Shotoku Tech, Saturday Story Time, 31 October 2020 edition. So let's talk turkey. Yes, this Oakland neighborhood has its own turkey, Gerald, and he's so insidious that he frequently attacks unsuspecting passers-by and forced the closure of this rose garden. So there was this debate about making him the centerpiece of a Thanksgiving Day dinner, but Oakland Animal Services balked at that idea and they relocated him to a place that had plenty of turkeys and no people. All right, good for you, Gerald. We were just talking about Osiris Rex capturing soil and rock samples from Bennu, and now come to find out they're not able to close the diaphragm and some of the materials leaking. So they're rushing to stow this capture device on the Osiris Rex spacecraft. Let's keep our fingers crossed. I get a kick out of this story. We talk a lot about the exoplanets that we're spying all around the universe. Well, there's about a thousand star systems where aliens could potentially exist on those exoplanets that we keep spying, and they could be looking at us. If observers were out there searching, they would be able to see a pale blue dot, signs of a biosphere, our planet. Of course, being 2020, murder hornets are still on the menu. And when I initially linked this story, they were talking about how they found the nest. They captured one of the murder hornets and attached this radio transmitter to it. And they were able to follow it to the nest. And so crews on last Saturday with the Washington State Agricultural Department went to this tree in the city of Blaine near the Canadian border to find this nest about the size of a basketball and it contained between 100 and 200 hornets. These guys had thick protective suits on and they vacuumed out the hornets. These hornets have six millimeter long stingers that can sting normal beekeeper suits. So they are cutting down the tree to extract any newborn hornets and learn if any queens have been left behind. So they're going to continue to search for more nests in the area. All right, maybe we can cross murder hornets off of the 2020 bingo card. So on Monday, scientists from NASA announced that they've found water on the moon's sunlit surface. This is really amazing. It's up to 20% more water than was previously expected to be found on the moon. So more than 15,000 square miles of lunar terrain have the capability of trapping water in the form of ice. We know there's tons of ice in the permanently shadowed craters of the moon's poles. But this is, like I say, 20% more than the previous estimates. The presence of water in sunlit surfaces has previously been suggested but not confirmed. You might remember on Shotoku Tech Saturday Storytime just a few weeks ago, we talked about how the side of the moon that faces the Earth actually is rusty. So we know there's water there. It's just how it gets there and how to access it are two questions that we still need to resolve. NASA's missions to the moon are still planning to go to the lunar south pole, which is especially rich in frozen water. Scientists have been doing an ultraviolet study of this massive asteroid, Psyche. It's about 140 miles in diameter. It's one of the most massive objects in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It's largely metallic and it's thought to be the leftover core of a failed planet. Psyche could be unique in that it might be made up of iron and nickel. This article doesn't mention it, but another article I read, they were getting all excited about the value of this metal, and uh, they may have been hinting about mining it or something. So, let's see. Am I pronouncing Psyche right? Let's check it. Psyche. Okay. For the first time in 120 years, scientists have discovered a new massive coral reef in Australia's Great Barrier Reef. 
This one is 1,600 feet tall. That's taller than the Empire State Building. And it's almost a mile wide. I really recommend that you follow the link in the description down below to my Blogspot article. Follow that link to this story because they have like a two hour video and it's very soothing where they have their little submarine and they're exploring around it and chatting so pleasantly while they do so. But this is a wonderful discovery. Astronomers have discovered this Mars-sized rogue planet drifting through the Milky Way. It's the smallest free-floating planet astronomers have found. It's too small to be observed directly. They basically find it through microlensing. If a massive object passes between Earth-based observers and a distant source star, its gravity may deflect and focus light from the source. The observer will measure short brightening of the source star. This microlensing requires three objects, the source, lens, and observer, to be nearly perfectly aligned. Increasing the odds of microlensing involves using surveys. They collect a lot of data and sift through it. Every night, the Ogle Surveys 1.3 millimeter Warsaw Telescope scans the Milky Way Center, home to hundreds of millions of stars looking for changes in stellar brightness. Microlensing doesn't depend on the object's brightness, it's about the mass. This rogue planet was spotted by measuring the light curve and duration of the microlensing event. It's less massive than Earth and about the same size as Mars. And it doesn't have a host star, so if you know of a star looking for a planet, Okay, good news, OSIRIS-REx successfully stows that sample of asteroid Bennu. On Wednesday, the mission team sent the commands to the spacecraft, instructing it to close the capsule, marking the end of the most challenging phase of the mission. I'm thankful our team worked so hard to get this sample stowed as quickly as they did, said Dante Loretta, OSIRIS-REx principal investigator and professor of planetary scientists at the University of Arizona. Now we can look forward to receiving the sample here on Earth and opening that capsule. Congratulations! So I've often wondered what's going to happen to all that content I purchased on Amazon Prime if I stop being a Prime member, and apparently you do not own the content. This woman sued Amazon Prime, alleging unfair competition and false advertising because content that she had purchased wasn't available when she wanted to view it. If you look at the terms of service, the user of Amazon Prime is paying for a limited license for on-demand viewing over an indefinite period of time. She claimed that they secretly reserved the right to terminate Prime Video consumers' access to content purchased through the service. Amazon sought the dismissal of her complaint on the ground that all of the titles she had purchased since filing the complaint are now available again. Sometimes that video that you bought might later become unavailable if third-party rights holder revokes or modifies Amazon's license, lawyers for Amazon wrote. The complaint points vaguely to online commentary about this alleged potential harm, but does not identify any Prime video purchase unavailable to the plaintiff herself. In fact, all of the Prime video content that the plaintiff has ever purchased remains available. Amazon further argued that user agreements explain that some Prime video content may become unavailable later. <laughs> Sneaky. Well, let's finish up with this story. Octopuses taste their food when they touch it with their arms. Octopuses can taste their prey before eating it, using their arms to lick it. Researchers say that cephalopods appendages are analogous to tongues with hands and brains. And that's a good thing because octopuses blindly hunt, sticking their limbs into holes and crevices to find prey. So they studied sucker cells of these octopuses, California two-spot octopuses, microscopically and at a molecular level. They used electrophysiology to measure the cell's electrical activity to test how sensitive the sucker's taste and touch receptors were to different kinds of flavors and odors respectively. 
They determined the receptors reacted to water-soluble chemicals, as well as chemicals that don't dissolve well in water, such as those emitted by toxic prey. Many marine animals have a sense of smell underwater, but it usually occurs over a distance. Poorly soluble molecules, like these toxins, require close-range detection, which is made easier by direct contact, similar to how tongues work. Strangely, octopuses do have a tongue-like organ in their mouth called a radula, and it cuts and scrapes prey, especially shellfish. But it doesn't seem to be capable of taste. It acts more like teeth. So, the suckers seem to be the specific taste touch receptors for octopus. Thank you for watching Shotoku Tech Saturday Story Time. Make sure to follow the link down below in the description to this Blogspot article that has all of the URLs to the stories we just talked about. Thank you and have a great week. Thank you for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.